Verily, he is born the Holy Child. Sing we all of the Savior month. Through long ages of the past, prophets of our gold is coming. Through long ages of the past, now the time has come at last. He is born the Holy Child. Sing the old poet when pipes merrily. He is born the Holy Child. Sing we all of the Savior mild. batteries in here but good morning good morning good morning we do have a couple of people in the congregation a couple of people are I don't know either dedicated or something else and did come in this morning um, but it's wonderful to have you all online I hope uh, you're warm in your homes this morning and uh, just sit back and enter into the spirit of the morning with us here this morning let's we're gonna join together I know you don't have a copy um, can they see it on the screen online? Yeah, they probably can, right? So Charlie's going to lead us in the invocation. This morning's call to worship is from Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe, Ascribe to the Lord of the glory, glory of, of his, his name. name. Worship, Worship the Lord in holy splendor. splendor. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. May, May the Lord give strength to his people. people. May, May the Lord bless his people with peace. And now let us sing verses 2 and 3 of He is Born on page 228. 228. <laughs> merrily he is born the holy child sing we all of the savior mild oh how lovely oh how pure is this perfect child of heaven oh how lovely oh how pure gracious gift to humankind he is born the holy child play the oboe and that pipes merrily he is born the holy child sing we now of the savior mild jesus lord of all the world coming as a child among us jesus lord of all the world grant us the heavenly peace he is born the Merrily, he is born the holy child. Sing we all of the Savior mm, Amen. Amen. Let's be open to our scripture for this morning. This morning's scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, and 21 and 22. I'm reading from the New International Version. Today's gospel lesson is in two parts. The first part, Luke is reaffirming that John is not the Messiah, but the forerunner who proclaims the way of the true Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Then in the second verses, Luke affirms that Jesus is the word and the way, the Son of God, as prophesied by Isaiah, Jeremiah, and many other times in the Old Testament. Hear now the inspired word of God. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one is, who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And verse 21, the baptized, baptism and genealogy of Jesus. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. 
And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. So now let us sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, verses 1, 3, and 4, 230 in your hymnal or on the screen. didn't think to let my car warm up first so as I'm driving along the windshield starts to ice up and I can hardly see and I had a neighbor come out of the, the uh, neighborhood before me and he or she only went a ways and then turned around and I think I went back so they were smart but uh, you know I was watching the ice storms I don't know what was it Kentucky or something this past week and the tractor trailers on the the interstate that just started to slide over and, and knock cars right off the road. Amazing. You know, so f as we come together in a time of prayer, I just really think about those who are on the roads right now, that uh, that spirit would so move that they would know enough to either pull over or slow down, be careful, be cautious, and that people would be able to make it safely to where they need to be this morning. My heart goes out to any who, you know, have a car that's wrecked and are going to try to get to church, to, to uh, work on Monday or something, you know? All those headaches of those kinds of things that happen. My heart just goes out uh, to them this day. I think about that. I think about my kids down in Maryland who have more snow than we do here. I think they've got about 11 inches of snow on the ground down there between two snowstorms. Uh, my five-year-old grandson, seeing it for the first time, is just loving it, you know. So think about the joy also that this kind of weather can bring. Do you have a joy or concern to share this morning? Um, I'll repeat it. You don't have to run around. I'll repeat it. If anybody has one, I'll just repeat it this morning. We do have a those of you who are out there uh, sitting in your homes, we do have a few people. Yes, sir, Wayne. As you walk in the church, yeah. Really yeah, okay. So. Yeah, I don't know if we've gotten the salt out yet. I'm not should sure. Should be by the door in a bucket. We'll check yeah. when we go down. Yeah, yep, should be. But Wayne's saying it's pretty slippery out here, too, so it's good that you're not venturing out if you haven't. Uh, be safe. Be safe. Darlene. Yeah. Happy birthday to you tomorrow. Yay. Oh, 
Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling lip nah, please. Yeah. I don't know. It's I'm in a funk in it too, you know. It's it's uh it's Yeah, well thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my heart goes out to uh Fred Hitner and to Tamra today and Dave. Dave I went over and saw I was with Dave trying to help him hook up his TV uh Saturday and Fred was down there and trying to trace wires as he's coughing away, but he's trying to help out his father in law. Um, and then he winds up having to go to the hospital, and is it, I know he's at least been diagnosed with pneumonia again, and it could be more than that. So, wow, the way that love unconditionally works, and, and yet, you know, I think Charlie was saying this morning, he's like Job, right? I renamed him Job. Yeah, yeah, curse God and die, not, yeah. not Fred, no, he would, you know? He would never curse well, God. I don't know, I mean, uh, but I meant that in this incredible way that, you know, you hold your faith. You know, God's with you, even in the toughest of times. And, and I think Fred's one of those good, great examples of that. You know, faith, true faith. Yeah. So, did, did I hear another one, another person? I, I have a joy. So I uh, put $500 down on a brand newborn yellow lab that I pick up at the end of February. So that's cool. That's cool. I'm pretty happy about that. Huh? Uh, middle to the end of February, I guess. At eight weeks, they do it. So a neat breeder, really fun to talk to and all. I've, I've kind of been looking all over the country, you know. And this guy's pretty neat, pretty neat. So what a blessing. And the pictures, oh, golly, they're so <laughs> cute. <laughs> Why didn't you show the pictures yet? <laughs> <laughs> really cute. Wow. Wow. But life, you know, new life. Neat, neat. Um, I was just looking to see if I had any other notes. I just have one other note is to, for me to continue to pray, not to screw up relationships. You take that for whatever it means to you. <laughs> just think about that. Yeah. 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 We forgot to mention last week anyway, we had received notice that Bob Brennan had passed away the first part of December. And of course, Bob was a... Uh, one of the choir members, great super voice. Mm. He was right next to my dad in wow. vocal performance, you might say. Wow. But the, his passing. Mm. And take a minute and just breathe the Holy Spirit out to Bob's family. That they would know that peace that passes understanding and that assurance of God's arms around their beloved Bob. Let's take a moment to just be in silent prayer. Thanks for the week. Other joys or concerns that are in your hearts this morning. With one heart, one voice. Let us join together in the prayer as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And let us not fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
this morning comes from Luke's second book, from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. There says that when the disciples at Jerusalem had heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two of them went down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit has not, had not come upon them, they'd only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The inspired word of God for the people of God. Thanks Amen. be to God. Amen. Amen. Let's sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. I don't know which verse is one in three. One in three. One in three. Hark the Herald Angels. spirit, that it would open our hearts and minds, it would anoint my tongue this morning, that the words that I share and the meditations of our hearts would bring glory to God and bring us closer to God. Amen? Wow, a couple of really neat stories this morning, you know. After participating in this ritual cleansing with a whole bunch of others, and as he then sat by himself to pray, this is Luke's version, remember, of the story here, the Spirit of God descended on Jesus of Nazareth in a profoundly physical way. Hmm? John the baptizer said of him, and he will baptize you, you, me, with that same Holy Spirit. Hmm. I remember the first time, or at least the first time I remember knowing that I had been filled, baptized with the Spirit of God. I was on a youth retreat to Horton Center up in, on Pine Mountain up here in Gorman, New Hampshire. I don't know if any of you have been up there. It was way back in my sophomore year of high school. A bunch of us packed into some cars on a Friday in January, rode for over two hours from Claremont, and then snowshoed up the mountain to the cabin up there. We spent four days studying scripture together, sharing things that we wouldn't share with just anybody else, sang, cooked, ate, and cleaned up together, and had worship out in the snow on Chapel Rock which looks over to snow-capped Mount Washington at that time, at that point. 
Well, on one of the days there, a few of us decided to go get the toboggan out. And I took the rear of the toboggan, dragging my foot, expecting that I'm going to steer this thing as we go down the hill. Well, we're going down this packed trail, and we start going really fast, and we didn't make one of the corners. And I got flung off, and I had a tree hit me broadside in the hip. Knocked the wind out of me, and I couldn't move. So these boys, these high school boys, got me back onto the toboggan. They pulled me back up the hill, and I could hear them worried about me and actually praying for me as they brought me up. And they got me to the cabin and inside and up close to the, to the fire there where I was finally able to kind of sit and get a little comfortable. And they were trying to tell the adults, you should take him to the local hospital. And of course, I'm a strong, you know, high school kids. So I said, no, no, I'll be all right. And I, and I was, but wow, wow. I felt God truly with me on that weekend. I felt baptized in the spirit, though I probably wouldn't have said it that way at the time. Yeah, we were friends, but it sure felt like more in those moments. God was there in them and them for me. It was way beyond knowledge, truly indescribable. Well, that's what takes me to this account from Acts. It's pretty clear from Luke's account that he was moved by the fact that one can accept the word, be baptized in the name of, and yet never really receive the Holy Spirit. Hmm. One can go to the altar, right? Confess his or her sins, name the Lord their Savior, and yet still not receive the Spirit, not actually connect with the divine and human life that I think I felt on that incredible weekend. Another time that I really experienced the indwelling of the sacred was in our men's life group you know, like you've been talking about, that I was a part of for over 12 years. We used to meet in the parlor of the church down in Maryland. We studied scripture together and shared our challenges with each other. And Hal Scholl was the patriarch of our group, 83 years to my 40 years old at the time. Hal's wife, Kay, was the Bible scholar. But Hal shared wisdom from his gentle heart and simple faith. Well, Hal wound up with cancer, and he couldn't meet at the church anymore, so I suggested that we meet at Hal's house after I, you know, okayed it with Kay. And he was really touched by it. What sharings we had. What praying, what times of coming together we had for those eight months before Hal passed. The spirit that was in Jesus was there. It was there. Way beyond biblical knowledge. Way beyond discussions about orthodoxy. We were indwelled. It was humbling and indescribable. And only... Months later, those guys were there for me when Linda called them to let them know my father had just suddenly passed. And they were all there again. And again, I felt this incredible baptism in the spirit. Jesus has his spirit moment. Heaven opening and the spirit pouring down as Fully human, and I think that's the point that's being made there where it says that the Spirit comes down in in bodily form, right? Therein, Jesus experienced the divine. And for me, this is what makes him one with God, makes him the very Son of Man. Hmm? And Luke's gospel, in in Luke's gospel, this became Jesus' primary mission to baptize everyone, as many as he could, with that same 
Holy Spirit. Wow. And what a testimony to that spirit, isn't it? In Peter and John, they prayed for a bunch of Samaritans. Huh? And then they went off and they laid hands on them. Orthodoxy said that Samaritans were not pure, were not of the chosen. Yet the indwelling spirit said otherwise to Peter and to John. Quite a point, I think, that Luke is trying to make here. Indeed, one can accept all the right beliefs, yet never really connect with God. I suppose that's what Jesus meant when he said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. What a tragedy. To accept is simply to agree with. It's a conscious choice based simply on, usually on logic, or on adamant assertions. Hmm? To accept is to believe. We then say that belief is simply an assent to intellect. Hmm? It's an agreement with certain, you know, explanations and assertions, but may not be faith not the indwelling of the Spirit of God, not the connection with the kingdom within, right? The kingdom of God is within. Wow. Church needs to return to faith, which is different than simply believing in what one can't prove. Hmm? Faith is beyond logic, beyond agreement, Faith is an openness and a trust based in experience. Scripture calls it revelation. Hmm? John Wesley had been an ordained Anglican priest for a lot of years. Hmm? But when he encounters the faith in some Moravians on a ship bound for America, he realizes that something vital is missing in his life. He goes to America and he sticks to his orthodoxy, which makes him a dismal failure there, and they literally run him out of town, out of Georgia, back to England, literally. Reverend Wesley was ready to give up his ordination after that, but one of those Moravians turned to him and said, preach Jesus till you have him, and after you have him, you'll preach Jesus. Once you have the Holy Spirit, believe versus have, right? Wesley goes on to have what he calls a strange warming of the heart. He really becomes baptized in the Spirit. And by golly, if you read his sermons and you look at the movement that comes from him, he preached Jesus. Wow. That's been the mission of Methodism ever since. He would say, offer them Christ. Offer them the very spirit that indwelled Jesus and made him the Christ. Amen? I have faith in God as redeeming love because I've experienced it in a bunch of high school kids, in a group of men, in Hal Shoal, way beyond belief way beyond logic. I experienced it in the wisdom of Hal, in the bonds of our men's group, and in a genuine compassion that even a bunch of, you know, hormone-filled high school boys can have. Pretty cool. That spirit went with me to seminary. It helped me to continue to move from simple belief to what I hope, and I really do feel, is a, a deep faith, a real indwelling of the Spirit of God. It's helped me to help others who legitimately question, who openly and humbly seek. It helps me to see the divine in everything, including other faith traditions and people who aren't the same as me who I might otherwise just discount as Samaritans. Hmm? It helps me to be there, I think, for 
those who suffer, and those especially who are pushed to the margins, who a lot of times we just sort of turn a blind eye to. And to really advocate for justice, God's justice. It's helped me to open my eyes, my mind, and my heart to reality, right? Heaven on earth, the wonders and the real truths. Simple faith, embracing the spirit. It's what will make the world more compassionate and peace-filled. Melt divisions, build bridges. So it wasn't a criticism of John and Peter. They simply recognized something that was missing in the Samaritans, and what did they do? They prayed for them, and they went out to them. Didn't make them come to, the, to them. Went out to them after spending much time in prayer and did what God called them to do. Brought to them the incredible presence of the divine, the sacred spirit. And that's all we're called to do, right? That's all the church is called to be and to do. Not to argue about belief, but to share faith. But we have to really want it. We have to really be open to it. And we do have to have faith in it, right? Be disciplined in it. Share it. Murray's been talking about these life groups over the last couple of weeks. These kind of small groups of the actual tradition of Methodism, right? It was John Wesley's place where people would come and be helped to experience what he had experienced, to move them from belief to faith by an inpouring of the sacred, where walls start to come down, where compassion begins to flourish, and from which the church might once again become a vital part of all people's lives in a community and rebuild community. Wesley was asked on his deathbed if he thought Methodism, the church he loved, would continue. And he said only if it maintains this tradition and discipline in it, but most importantly, the spirit in which it began. I hope you'll all join. I hope you'll all join in the tradition. I hope you'll join one of these small groups. You can start on Tuesday mornings. We're going to start, you know, another book that you've probably seen um, on the emails that are out there. If not, let me know, and I'll, I'll uh, share more of that with you. Um, only from here will the church become, I think, a real vital part of people's lives in the community. And I've crossed this out, but I think I'll share it. But on a final personal note, this faith, this baptism in the spirit, it's what's held me together, you know, through the suffering and death of my wife of 40 years. And I've been thinking a lot about that, and I just give thanks. But God has really poured more than knowledge and a polemic, whatever you want to call it, into my heart. And it's opening me up to new life. And I'm just thankful for that. So before we pack it away for another year, hear those words of Charles Wesley one more time. Hark the herald angels sing. Hail the heaven-born prince of peace. Ah, light and life to all he brings. Born to give us second birth born of the spirit birth to real wisdom unlimited compassion true faith born to raise us from the earth not away from the earth but to the fullness of life for all come Holy Spirit ah, just, just breathe that for a moment I don't know, for me, it's, it's just incredible. Such a wonderful feeling. Whew. That all the world might know that blessing. 
There's someone in a dark corner right now who feels forgotten. There's someone who's angry, can forgive. There's someone who's suffering. We'll hear a knock on the door and somebody with the arms of God to just be there with and for them. That we would be reminded of joy. Remember that Jesus said that my joy would be in you and your joy would be complete by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that binds me and my Father together as one. True Christ. True Son of God. Son of man, this is what it means. Amen? Amen. Shall we join together? And so what are we singing as we go forward? O Spirit of the living God. O Spirit of the living God. Shall we stand? more and make it truly thine. It will with love and joy and power and righteousness and peace till Christ shall dwell in human hearts and sin and sorrow cease. The wind of God with wisdom blow unto of error clouds of doubt which bind our eyes to thee burn wing and fire inspire our lips with flaming love and zeal to preach to all thy great blues God's glorious common will teach us to yeah why don't we keep going okay. he's got it up there <laughs> Just to utter living words of truth which all may hear. The language all may understand when love speaks loud and clear. Till every age and race and clime shall blend their creeds in one. Tender shall form one family by whom thy will is done. Go ahead, let's do the last one. <laughs> so. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so shall we know the power of Christ who came this world to save. So shall we rise with him to life which soars beyond the grave. And earth shall win through holiness, which makes thy children whole. Till perfected by thee we reach creation's glorious goal. Cool, huh? Creation's glorious goal, which is right here. People filled with the Spirit, compassion reigning all, forgiveness over division. Wow, that's the kingdom of God. May you know that today. Go off and be safe on your way home. Go sit by the fire with someone and just give thanks for the spirit that has indwelled you. And remember, remember your times where you felt that incredible presence and hold on to that. Nurture it. Be disciplined in it. Hmm? Go in Christ and Christ will go in you. Amen. Amen. Grant us peace through all our trials. May he shelter us from harm and keep us safe and warm as we go along. May the love of Jesus go with you as we part and go our separate ways. 
May we be more like him with a love that shines within. Father, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. Be careful.